Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TVR Schmidt and this is my wife Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I think most people just say Dr. Strangelove. But what do you know about this? Uh, I don't know anything. Obviously, we are familiar with the director. Yeah, so it's another uh, Stanley Kubrick movie. Yes, so going in with knowing that this is a Stanley Kubrick film, we've watched I feel like a handful of Kubrick films at this point. Yeah, I think we're up to like three or four. Yeah, so we've watched Full Metal Jacket. 2001 A Space Odyssey, The Shining, and uh, Clockwork Orange. Yes. So yeah, so four movies so far. So this will be our fifth, and I believe this is a comedy. Oh, okay. I, yeah, this was pretty highly recommended. Yeah, definitely highly recommended. I think it's a comedy, which is kind of weird because so far, the other four movies, there are some comedy elements. They're pretty dark. But they're all very dark. Like, I can't really imagine. Like, dark and artistic. So maybe this is, like, uh, very dark humor or something like that. Yeah. But uh, I'm super excited to check this out. Yeah, me too. I think um, from the movie poster, it looks like maybe this is, like, a mad scientist. Yeah, like, we follow Dr. Strangelove, like, some crazy scientist or something. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> we'll figure it out soon. So if you would like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you would like to interact with us on our Instagrams, Twitch, or Twitter, all of those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the movie. The Soviet Union had been at work on what was darkly hinted to be the ultimate weapon. Okay, so we got some warfare going on. Very romantic refueling. Peter Sellers, that sounds super familiar. Yeah. Percy Scott. I feel like I know who these people are. James Earl Jones. This is going too fast now. <laughs> <laughs> so if they keep having to say this is fictitious, it must be close to something that really happened. I feel like that's like the, the disclaimer they put on like Law and Order when it's <laughs> clearly based on something. <laughs> what skill must that take? To, like fly it's pretty impressive yeah also our first black and white movie it seems you're right you don't think i'd ask if you recognize my voice unless it was pretty damned important do you mandrake maybe take the cigar out of your mouth it looks like we're in a shooting war oh hell <laughs> i want all privately owned radios to be immediately impounded oh worried about a spy <laughs> Doesn't sound good. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> Just cl closing the blinds. Each B-52 can deliver a nuclear bomb load of 50 megaton. Jeez oh. Louise. <laughs> okay. Prepared to drop. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Doesn't look like they're paying attention. <laughs> Crossword puzzle. Cards. Uh, Do they have an autopilot? <laughs> oh, wing attack plan R. Did you say wing attack plan R? There's gotta be something wrong. Pretty sure it's wing attack plan R. Seems intense though, so I'm sure they need <laughs> to check a lot. Major Kong, is it possible this is some kind of loyalty test? There's James Earl Jones. Oh wow, I didn't even realize that was him. Going to war. Well boys, I reckon this is it. <laughs> I'd say that you're all in line for some important promotions. And I guess that's a good way to look at it if you're gonna drop a nuclear bomb. You're all gonna get promoted. Sleeps and heels. <laughs> Doc, should I get it? It decoded as wing attack, plan R. General suggests you call General Ripper, the 843rd base commander. It really seems like he should come to the phone. <laughs> wow, are you sure it's plan R? So I feel like that code was not supposed to go out. They're so concerned about it now. And that's why they shut off all the radios, everything. Mosey over the war room for a few minutes, see what's doing over there. The Air Force never sleeps. I'm not sleepy either. Uh, priorities. Anyone that approaches within 200 yards of the perimeter... I feel like this guy's going low. I have the same feeling. Shoot first and ask questions afterwards. Shoot first Ooh. and ask questions later. What? So he has a radio. I feel like whatever's going on, they gotta stop this bomber from dropping a nuke. Ooh. Whoa. So one for each member? Oh yeah, pilot. Oh. They're all gonna have different missions. 
Hopefully same mission, different <laughs> roles. Right. Be switched in to all the receiver circuits. Locking transmission. Code prefix set. OPE. Lock code prefix. <laughs> Ope. Ope. <laughs> all circuits switched to CRM discriminators. Auto destruct circuits checked. Oh jeez. Hopefully they don't need to use that. I thought I issued instructions for all radios on this base to be impounded. Yeah. Spend a minute stopping all that stuff. I'd better tell you because if they do, it'll cause a bit of a scare. Uh -oh. oh no, Mandrake. We don't want to start a nuclear war unless we really have to, do we? I feel Aren't like he would. Oh, whoa. It's a knife. Prep cigars. If a Russian attack was in progress, we would certainly not be hearing civilian broadcasting. If a Russian attack was not in progress, then your use of plan R. Yeah. Yeah, you just figured it out. <laughs> Please make me a drink of grain alcohol and rainwater and help yourself to whatever you'd like. He's slowly backing out of that room. <laughs> yeah, right? It is my clear duty to issue the recall code and bring back the wing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he locked it. Oh, my God. I'm the only person who knows the three-letter code group. Oh. There it is. A decision is being made. There is no possibility of recalling the wing. Total commitment. Oh, no. War is too important to be left to politicians. Just took it upon himself to start this war. Communist indoctrination to sap and impurify all of our precious bodily fluids. So far, we haven't met a Dr. Strangelove. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President. World targets and General Jack Jacks. Ripper. <laughs> it was Jack Ripper? Yeah. Triangles are their primary targets. The squares, their secondary targets. A lot of targets. It's beginning to look like uh, General Ripper exceeded his authority. Yeah, he kind of went pretty far. Then why haven't you radioed the planes countermanding the GOAT code? They turned off communication. As you may recall, sir. <laughs> he does not recall. CRM-114 is designed not to receive at all. Correct three-letter code group 17 thousand permutations 17,000 um, and they got about 20 25 minutes. minutes about 18 minutes not <laughs> general ripper uh, sealed off the base and cut off all communication i like how there's so many people at this table and there's only two people talking my boys will give you the best kind of start 1400 megatons worth wanting total commitment and he hung up this man is obviously a psychotic yeah yeah oh, hold off judgment on thing like Hold off judgment. <laughs> have 18 minutes until nuclear war. Don't think it's quite fair to condemn a whole program because of a single slip up, sir. <laughs> it's nuclear war. General Face. So much gum. Yes, sir. My little baby, I can't, I can't talk to you now. Is this the secretary? The president needs me. Bucky will be back there just as soon as he can. <laughs> Everyone in this room can hear that conversation. <laughs> I want them to enter the base, locate General Ripper, and put him in immediate telephone contact with me. They, he already ah. gave the order to fight back and shoot first. Yeah. Any force trying to enter there would certainly encounter very heavy casualties. My boys can brush him aside without too much trouble. Um, uh. How much time have they taken? <laughs> <laughs> like 25 minutes, 18 minutes, 10 minutes. If. This is a lot. On the other hand. We could easily assign three missiles to every target and suffer only modest and acceptable civilian casualties. Oh, my God. Never to strike first with nuclear weapons. I would say that General Ripper has already invalidated that part. <laughs> One where you got 20 million people killed and the other where you got 150 million people killed. Yeah, it's still a lot. <laughs> but I do say no more than 10 to 20 million killed. Tops. <laughs> Is that the Russian ambassador you're talking about? You'll see everything. <laughs> You'll see the big board. The big board. That's what I was thinking. I feel like they should get Russia involved. Yeah. Let them know this was not us. This is not us. Shoot it down. Even though it's not really them either. No, but... they're act and they were super suspicious of the code anyway. Yeah, they double checked. Four days concentrated emergency rations. Four days in that tiny box? I guess. Super calorie dense. <laughs> A little Bible. Ration, phrase book and Bible. Russian phrase. Three lipsticks. Three <laughs> pair lipsticks. of nylon stockings. What the? Good weekend in Vegas with all that stuff. <laughs> He's clutching the books so... Now they're physically fighting. 
They have such a big buffet in this war room. Look at this, Mr. President. This lousy commie rat was taking pictures with this thing of the big board. I don't know who to believe. <laughs> it's like they're just <laughs> sitting on each other's lap. <laughs> it's the army arriving. Yeah, to the base. You sure got ahead of those commies. Yeah. <laughs> the commies. Uh oh. Probably put them from the army as war surplus. Just killing each other. And they're defending pretty well. But they're killing a bunch of Americans. <laughs> Probably has like 10 minutes left. I mean, at this point, it's too late for anything. They just have to do damage control. Yeah. You're not in your world for that. Be careful, Mr. President. I think he's drunk. <laughs> oh, great. You suppose you could turn the music down just a little? Oh, no. Just more gum. Fine, I can hear you now, Dimitri. Well then, as you say, we're both coming through fine. Oh my god, you have like five minutes at this point. <laughs> I agree with you. It's great to be fine. <laughs> Went a little funny in the head. You know. Just a little funny. Went and did a silly thing. <laughs> to attack your country. <laughs> Just a silly little goof. <laughs> Why do you think I'm calling you? Just to say hello? <laughs> oh of course god. I like to say hello. Come on, Dimitri. Listen, if it wasn't friendly, you probably wouldn't have even got it. <laughs> if we're unable to recall the planes, then... Gonna have to shoot it down. It's gonna have to help you destroy them, Dimitri. <laughs> the people... You, sorry, you faded away there. Uh-huh. I like the Russian ambassador's just facial expression the entire time. I'm sorry too, Dimitri. <laughs> I am as sorry as you are, Dimitri. Don't say that you're more sorry than I am. So we're both sorry, all right? You're both well, and you're both sorry. Da? Uh-oh. What? <laughs> I'm you, naturally. They do not have a translator here? Do the key. This seems really bad. That was a very different conversation than he just had with the president. The doomsday machine. A device which will destroy all human and animal life on Earth. What? I don't know. A lot of gum. Yeah, there is. They're real close. <laughs> on no account, will a commie ever drink water? He has lost <laughs> his mind. Seven-tenths of this Earth's surface is water. Seventy percent of you is water. Maybe this has to do with the doomsday, doom the doomsday device. Oh my god! Golf clubs? <laughs> it's just going golfing or... Oh, oh. nope. <laughs> it's got a big gun in there. Andrek, come here. <laughs> you calling me, Jack? Oh my god. But, um, what's <laughs> happened? You see the string in my legs gone. Come over here. The redcoats are coming. Come on! <laughs> A doomsday shroud. President, we're wasting valuable time. Look at the big boy. They're getting ready to clobber us. <laughs> the heck was that? No. It is designed uh -oh. to explode if any attempt is ever made to untrigger it. Order. Oh, what? Our doomsday scheme cost us just a small fraction of what we've been spending on defense in a single year. Wow. Oh, wipe out the whole earth. Dr. Strangelove, do we have anything like that in the works? Finally, Dr. Strangelove. Based on the findings of the report, this idea was not a practical deterrent. <laughs> Dr. Strangelove is a unique individual. Deterrence is the art of producing in the mind of the enemy because of the automated and irrevocable decision. <laughs> Gee, I wish we had one of them doomsday machines, thank you. <laughs> What's worse than one doomsday is two. <laughs> The whole point of the Doomsday Machine is lost. It was to be announced at the Party Congress on Monday. Oh my god. I love the signs that peace is our profession as they're shooting each other. They're definitely making progress towards the building. Yeah. Feels so bad for Mandrake. <laughs> yeah. Don't you think we'd be better off in some other part of the room away from all this flying glass? <laughs> 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 Poor Mandrake. You know, when fluoridation first began, 1946, a foreign substance is introduced into our precious bodily fluids. 
That's the way your hardcore Kame works. Is this why he's doing this? I think so. Because of fluoride? <laughs> you first became aware of it, Mandrake, during the physical act of love. <laughs> Women sense my power. <laughs> I do deny them my essence. <laughs> what the hell is he talking about? I've given up. It's down to just Mandrake and Ripper. The boys must have surrendered. Now they let me down. Uh oh. I'm sure they all gave it their very best. <laughs> gave it their very and best. I'm sure they all died thinking of you. <laughs> My God. Would you look at me now? Like that thousand yard stare or whatever. Yeah. You know, those clowns outside are going to give me a pretty good going over in a few minutes. Oh, no. My advice to you, Jack, is to give me the code now. Yeah. You with your gun, and me with the belt and the ammo feeding you, Jack. Come on, Mandrake. I happen to believe in a life after this one. I know I'll have to answer what I've done. Uh oh. You dropped your gun, Terry. <laughs> you dropped your gun. That's what we need, Jack. Water on the back of the neck and the codes. Damn. I knew that was coming. No more code. DSO to Captain, I have an unidentified radar blip. It's gotta be the Russians. Looks like a missile tracking us. Uh oh. They're already trying to shoot him down? Ooh, I'd be sick on that. Right. Missile track deflecting. Oh. Continue evasive action. The warning? Yeah. Or did they manage to def I don't know if it was trick like, it. Yeah. Maybe they tricked it. <laughs> oh. Dang. Uh-oh. It's not very many places to land this thing if they're going down. Jeez. They're really going at an angle there. I feel like they're getting the fire contained. <laughs> Purity. P -O -E. Oh, OPE. That's a code, right? I'm General Ripper's executive officer. He's dead in the bathroom. <laughs> it's some sort of recurrent theme he kept repeating. It's a variation on peace on earth or purity of essence. It's got to get that code to someone. Do you have any way to communicate? Maybe the army can communicate. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, all their shit's shot. Doesn't even matter. Great. Roger, navigator. They're low. I yeah. Our rate of fuel loss not be able to make it back to any base or neutral country. Oh, great. Don't have enough fuel to ditch at weathership Tango Delta. After dropping <laughs> two bombs. <laughs> yeah. They have a gun. They have the little Bible with the Russian translator book. I think General Ripper found out about your preversion. And that you were organizing some uh, kind of mutiny of preverts. Now move! Oh my god. I am General Ripper's executive officer, so the president will bloody well want to speak to me, won't he? Good job, Mandrake. Oh my this, goodness. This is, why is there a payphone in here like this? How is he going to get in touch with the president? I don't know. Operator? President? Operator? <laughs> could, you, uh, could you make this a collect call, operator? <laughs> They won't accept the call. Have you got 55 cents? <laughs> that killed the cola machine. I want you to shoot the lock off it. There may be some change in there. It's against orders. It's private property. <laughs> That's what the bullets are for, you twit! <laughs> oh, dang, Mandrake. You know what's going to happen to you? What? You're going to have to answer to the Coca-Cola company. <laughs> Woo, jackpot! Yeah. Oh, no, Coke! <laughs> oh. No. Oh. Is being acknowledged. Except for one. But it worked. It worked for all of them, but the the one that we've been following doesn't have the ability to receive. And it's not going to be on this. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> your Kissoff's calling again, and he's hopping mad. They can't get in touch with one. No. Maybe they'll just run out of fuel. No, Dimitri. There must be some mistake. I I'm perfectly certain of that, Dimitri. This conversation. Dimitri, look, we got an acknowledgement from every plane except the four you've shot down. He shot three. Well, the fourth one didn't hit. Now only claims three aircraft confirmed. The fourth may only be damaged. <laughs> Depression. Space. <laughs> I guess you're just going to have to get that plane, Dimitri. I'm sorry that jamming your radar and flying so low, but they're trained to do it. <laughs> I'm sorry they're doing it. <laughs> Listen, I'm so stressed out. Dimitri, there's no point in you getting hysterical at a moment like this. Dimitri, 
Put everything you've got into those two sectors and you can't miss. How good is this cowboy head <laughs> flying? We only have uh, 38 minutes. Will not even take us as far as the primary. Wow. What's the nearest target opportunity? Oh no, they're just gonna bomb something else. They're going off course. No one knows where they're going. Yeah. All right. Designating new target. Where's the doomsday device? I think it, it doesn't matter. It's just set to go off if they're attacked. So if they attack anywhere, it goes off. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed, Dimitri. And remember, <laughs> there's just one thing. We are all in this together. Maybe I'm solo. I mean, <laughs> you ought to see it sometime. It's a psycho. A pass, he got a chair. <laughs> <Hell yeah. laughs> He's so proud of the fact that he does have a chance. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does. One They're so close to setting Bob this thing off. Like All the safeties. Oh, they can't open it. Bomb door circuits. Negative function. Please don't be able to open the door. Oof. Operate manual override. Do they literally just have to go manually, like, crank these doors open? Fire the explosive bolt. Wow, they have a lot of contingencies to open up these doors. Oh my god, that's not working either. I hope they don't just like crash the plane to blow up the target. I'm going down below and see what I can do. Roger. So you gonna physically try to open it? Yeah. Mm. Hi there, dear John. You're not just gonna get sucked out? I don't know. All of this for a mission that's not even real? Not even their bombing target. I like how they say handle with care. He's just climbing all over it. Target distance, eight miles. They're only eight miles away? That's not that much time. That looks pretty messed up to try to fix this. They're only six miles away. And they're still so low. They're gonna drop this nuke and it's gonna kill them too. Oh no, he got them open. Oh! I feel like that's how he would have wanted that's, to go. He seems pretty happy writing that nuke down. I would not rule out the chance to preserve a nucleus of human specimens at the bottom of uh, some of our deeper mine shafts. How long would you have to stay down there? 93 years, right? Uh -uh. <laughs> 100 years? <laughs> Live in a mine for 100 years. <laughs> Nuclear reactors could provide power almost indefinitely. It's vital that our top government and military men be included. <laughs> the fuck? Uh, <laughs> what the hell was that? Does his arm, like, have a mind of its own? Yeah. <laughs> the spirit of bold curiosity for the adventure ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Trying to kill him? <laughs> no one's phased by this. Where are you going? You might even try an immediate on the alert. Oh, he that was taking photos. Now it's a race for a mine shaft. Monsieur <laughs> has been walked. Oh my god. <laughs> what an ending. Just every nuke going off. It's got to be all, like, real footage of nuclear tests, maybe. Maybe. The contrast of this song over this footage. Right. Meet again in a hundred years. All right. That was Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. What'd you think? That was great. Yeah. I didn't know what to expect. Obviously, didn't realize that was a comedy until you had mentioned it. Yeah, and then I, when I said that in the beginning of the movie, there was some humor, but I was like, man, is this a comedy? And uh, it picked up as the movie went on and it was hilarious. Yeah, it was super funny. It was like a mixture of silly humor and clever humor. Yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed that. Oh yeah, it was it was great because it had a engaging, compelling story that theoretically could be pretty serious. Like yeah. if you're not too many comedy plots are like a rogue general calling for a nuclear attack on Russia to force a war. Somehow you turn that into something that was just super hilarious. Yeah, it was so funny. I feel like my favorite part 
Pence were listening to the president speak to Dimitri. That was comedy gold. Yeah, those scenes were perfect. Yeah. And we were only hearing one side of the conversation. <laughs> right, it was just like, Dimitri, Dimitri, <laughs> I can be just as sorry as you, Dimitri. Like, it was so good. Yeah. And then um, looking up the cast, I had no idea uh, Peter Sellers played Mandrake, the president, and Doctor Strange Love. Oh, no way. So he played those three characters. I had no idea. No, I didn't either. Obviously we were like, oh, Peter Sellers, but did not realize, like, I didn't even realize that was the same person. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, so just a fantastic job because I really liked Mandrake. Like he was just super funny and like way too polite. And then the president, obviously, like you said, some of the most hilarious parts was just him talking with Dimitri. Yeah. And then for a movie that's called Dr. Strangelove, Dr. Strangelove was in this movie for like four minutes. Yeah, or not a lot. Not a lot of time. But the ending with Dr. Strangelove just stole the whole movie for me. Yeah. Like out of nowhere, having like a Nazi arm, like like his arm was was a Nazi and throughout the entire time, he's just like violently trying to stop it from, or, or like when he would say my Fuhrer instead of like my president or something. And then what the heck was the ending where he just stands up out of the wheelchair and then that's the end of the movie. And it's just like, <laughs> that was so incredibly strange. I, before the movie started, we kind of gave a prediction of what we thought and you said that you pretty much thought it was going to be like a mad scientist type of movie following Doctor Strange. Yeah. Love. Yeah, not at all. So we do know that Doctor Strange Love became a citizen of the United States. Yeah, so he's he was German. Yeah. And I'm sure he was a German scientist who <laughs> came over for the from the war or something. Yeah, so that was awesome at the end, just like him trying to strangle himself. <laughs> yeah, like... I forget. He was just like straight up for like ten seconds, he's trying to kill himself. Oh, or his arm was. Right, yeah. Yeah, no, that was, uh, there were so many good moments, I think. And then I liked also all of the scenes with the men on the plane. Yeah, and it was, it was a strange movie where scenes felt very real. Yeah. Like, everything that happened on the plane felt very realistic. Yeah. And, like, they were struggling with fuel and they almost got a hit and they had to do all these different precautions and changing their targets it didn't really become a comedy on, there was a few moments on, on the plane, but the big one was uh, Major King Kong, I guess, who's played by Slim Pickens, who I remember that name because I saw him in Blazing Saddles. Mm. The biggest comedy moment was Slim Pickens riding the nuclear bomb down. <laughs> And you had the other comedy moments of uh, like the little Bible and Russian phrases and stuff. That was awesome. <laughs> that whole little packet. But that was like the peak of that little box that they got. Yeah. But I really did enjoy the plane scenes as well. Yeah. And the, the whole time, I think the plane scene is played to like the saints come marching in, maybe. Yeah. So it's just like every time they were up there, it's just that song is yeah. <laughs> continuing to play. I mean, really, everyone was was great in this. I mean, uh, George C. Scott, Buck, General Buck. Yeah. He was hilarious. He was crazy. Just him eating so much gum. Like, was he literally eating it? Or did, like, he should have at one point like pulled it out and it have been just like a big wad of gum or something. Yeah, he was a stressed mess. <laughs> Just and when he had like his hand up on his head and he's just like... His facial expressions were just perfect. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was great kind of playing along of like, oh man, you know, maybe we should just go out with a full on attack or so afraid of the uh, Russian um, ambassador taking photos and stuff who ended up did he taking was. photos of, of the big board. He's like, he's going to see the big board or how he was like... Uh, if he comes in here, he's gonna see all this, and he like closed up his like little binder. And <laughs> he's was, like, like <laughs> holding it close. That was just so perfect. Yeah. And like we said, it was still like a stressful story. Yeah, I really didn't know where it was gonna go. I feel like because it's a comedy as well, they probably could have taken a lot of liberties and just ended up blowing up the whole. I mean, they kind of did end up blowing up yeah, the whole they, world. Yeah, the whole world, it actually did kind of blow up, so. <laughs> but there's definitely, they could have done a lot, so you really didn't know how it was going to end. Right, it was it was definitely unpredictable. Yeah. Uh, and they kept you on your toes. Every time you thought like, oh, 
uh, Mandrake got the OPE code. Yeah. Um, nope, it called off everyone except for the one plane that we've been following because their comms were blown up. And then you kind of get like the little info of like, we don't have enough gas to get to our primary or fuel to get to our primary target. So you're like, cool. And then they pivot to something else. And you're like, fuck, because the president just told the Russians exactly where they're going to be and they're not going to be there anymore. So right. it really kept you on your toes as a comedy. Yeah. Absolutely. The only part that I wish that they had shown was when um, Mandrake is trying to get to the president on the phone in the phone booth. Yeah. And that whole scene was really funny with the Coke machine. Yeah. It was just like begging the operator to please like send me through to the president and, and finally shooting the Coke machine. Yeah. And he's like, well, you know, if this doesn't work, you're going to have to answer to Coke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to answer to Coca-Cola. It's like, Okay, just shoot the machine. <laughs> it just squirts him in the face. But I do wish that we would have seen that conversation a little bit. Like, it's one of those things that I could have done with a little bit more of dragging out with the operator to get to the president because I just thought that was so funny. Yeah, it was so funny. Or I'm sure the conversation with the president would have been hilarious too because every phone call that the president had was fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, watching the movie, I was super impressed with just how good of a movie it was and how funny it was. And yeah. this is coming from Stanley Kubrick, who everything we've seen from him has been pretty dark and, yeah. you know, mysterious. And, you know, it's uh, some rough stuff. Yeah, and there was a lot of, it's, I mean, not all of the films, but a lot of them are very, like, heavy on kind of the artistic side. Yeah. And this, you know, there were some really cool shots and obviously the end was almost like a montage to- like Nuclear explosions. Yeah, everything just blowing up. But this definitely was very different from oh, yeah. the other Kubrick films that we've seen. Yeah, and it was, it was amazing. So good. Like I wouldn't have been shocked if his whole career would have just been comedy movies. Yeah. I've been like, oh well, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, no, this was so good. And just the way that it ended. For a comedy movie, kind of like you said, they could kind of go in any direction that they want, but they definitely went with the failure route. <laughs> the whole movie was a failure and the whole world is now destroyed essentially by this doomsday bomb. Yeah. And that's what we saw in all the nuclear explosions. Yeah. And just how they pivoted to the potential to go into the mine. Oh, I know. <laughs> that was so hilarious. Like you could tell, at the beginning, they're like living in a mine. And once it started getting to be like, you know, all of the politicians and uh, military uh, generals are gonna have to go, obviously. And, oh, we're gonna need 10 women for every one man. And, you know, we're gonna need every woman to be super beautiful because we just need it, you know? So, and then all the guys are kind of like, yeah, this is a great idea. <laughs> it's just like, oh my God. That was funny, but it, it took like a turn. Like it, at first it was like, okay, we're gonna, you know, we need to protect these people. What, like we gotta repopulate, like how are we gonna do this? And then it was just like, all right, okay, that's enough. Right. Okay, that's <laughs> enough. <laughs> and then, uh, and they even took it a step further where they were talking about, you know, we have to do this or else Russia's gonna have better minds than us and there's gonna be a mind gap or something. It's just yeah. gonna be like, we can't let the Russians win on bi building better underground cities. Like, yeah. It's just like, and then you have the ambassador like walk off and he's just <laughs> taking photos. So it was just perfect from start to finish. Yeah. Because like we said, it was super engaging, super funny. It surprised you at every turn. Yeah. Very, very enjoyable. And like you had mentioned, our first black and white film. First on the black channel. and white film. Yeah. And it was amazing. Yeah. And I would have appreciated it a lot more during the reaction, I think, if I would have realized that the same actor was playing so many different roles. Yes. Because that's crazy. Like, I, I want to go back and watch it and, and just appreciate how well that was pulled off. Yes. Yeah. I'm bummed that we didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah, especially because I could, you know, if you wanted to pick favorite people in the movie, you can honestly pick any one of his three portrayals. Yeah. It's not like he was just some side characters here or there. No. So. Stole the show. Stole the show. <laughs> so fantastic. So glad this was recommended to us. And I, I loved every minute of it. Yeah, me too. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we have reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you would like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.